of the home. In Matthew, the 24th chapter, verse 37, uh, there's that, and th verse 38, uh, we have the well-known scripture, <clears throat> excuse me, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. You know, Jesus said one of the signs of the last days would be the increase in marriage and divorce. He said marrying and giving in marriage. There would be a lot more divorces and a lot more remarriages in the last days. And he said, and if we see what Paul said over in Timothy, it's going to have a devastating effect upon young people. On September the 5th, 1967, Governor Ronald Reagan signed into law the first no-fault divorce in the uh, law in the United States. And other states followed. Now before 1960, the divorce rate in California was 16%. After 1960, uh, the, after 1967, uh, rather, uh, it quickly grew to 40%. And we have seen it increase all across America. Today in the United States, the divorce rate, depending on the statistics you read and how they're interpreted, I suppose, the divorce rate stands somewhere between 40 and 50%. They say it has actually gone down a little bit in the last few years. Well, I won't go into the reason for that. You know that. What I'm talking about and what the Bible is talking about is the family. You know, the, va the family is the most basic institution that God has placed upon this earth. God has a special place in his heart for a family. God wants families to do well. Listen, one thing, you know, one of the things that people need to understand, they often hear Christians talk about sin and they often talk about, they hear the church condemn sin. And folks, listen, by the way, that's our job. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to stand against sin and things that are wrong. And it's not wrong for a church to stand up and say, sin is sin. In fact, that's what needs to be done more and more today. But you know, people need to see the positive aspect of living for the Lord. You know, a person who gets saved and brings their family and, and, their, and, and their family gets saved and they live for the Lord, uh, God encourages the man to be a strong part, a, a, a leader in that family. In fact, he's supposed to be the priest of that home. He's supposed to lead his family. He's supposed to teach his children. He's supposed to, to help his wife. And he's supposed to love his wife as his own body, the, say, the Bible says. God wants families to be strong. God wants people to be honest. God wants people to have integrity in their life. Today in the United States, you know, we're seeing all kinds of things. I, I just, it, it just makes me shudder to see what's going on in many homes. Did you know many homes today have absolutely no Christian dad? No dad that gets up on Sunday morning and says, let's go to church. No dad that takes his children aside and teaches them about the Bible. No dad that says, let's pray at the table. Let's stop and say, uh, table grace. There is just not a strong Christian uh, dad in so many. Now, I know there are in some. Praise God. And there probably are in me. Praise God for that. But you know, <clears throat> excuse me. Listen, we need, we need folks, listen. We need Christian dads who will love the Lord. And there's so many men today who just simply don't want anything to do with God. And they're not living the way that they ought to live, and it's costing their home, and it's costing their families. Gross language. I, I just shudder to hear the kinds of things, and not necessarily foul language. Don't know what's going on with my voice. I shut the fan off. Maybe I'll turn the air conditioning off next. I'm fine till I come to church. I don't know what's going on. I'll figure it out, but you just pray for it. It usually gets better. But folks, I'm going to tell you something. From the time that I was a child growing up in the society that I lived in, and I'm talking about uh, different homes, not just one home or two homes, but different homes, the, the grossness that I see in people's lives today, it, it's a terrible thing to see. People are, are, are they're saying words that, that, that they don't need to be using. 
They're teaching their children. And I know a lot of it's the effect of, of society. It's the effect of the peer pressure. It's the effect of television and all of those things. But listen, they, we need, we need a, a holy cleansing of the home in America today. And parents are responsible for that. I've heard parents say, well, you can't, you, can't, you can't protect your kids from everything. Bless your heart, you'd better protect them from everything you can protect them from. That's why God put them in your home. I hear little kids say stuff. I like to say some of it's just foul. Some of it's just, some of it's just rotten. But some of it's just repeating repeating things that just the words and things that I will not mention from this pulpit but, but they have an attitude that I know that when you teach the Bible and when you teach holiness and purity in the home and you have a, a standard then, then those kinds of things won't go on there. There's a sensualness for lack of a better word. There's a sensual attitude in people's lives today. I get so upset at some of the some of the radio programs. I can't listen to hardly <laughs> I don't know of any local talk show I can listen to. There's a couple of guys on one of the radio shows and and I just when I hear them come on, I shut it off. You know, it used to be that radio and TV kind of raised the standard for people. They kind of, they brought people, people up to a higher standard. Now it seems like that every radio and TV show and the, everything in the world is trying to drag people through the gutter. There's a sensual, unholy attitude in many homes. No depth. And so many people, so many Christians have no depth in their Christian life. And the, the effect upon children in our society is devastating. And that's what the Apostle Paul was warning Timothy about here. He said just before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, society, society is going to get so sensual. It's going to get, it's going to get so bad. We have juvenile delinquency today. We have all kinds of that's, that's rising. Uh, we all know what's happened in education. Alcohol and drugs. Child abuse continues to rise. 2.9 million children in the 1990s. I couldn't find the statistics today, but I know it's very high. Uh, you know, I see rebellion driving down the road. I think it was yesterday, the day before. And there was two young boys, I assume they were probably teenagers, young teenagers, on bicycles. Got out in front of me in their, on their bicycles. I was driving a car. Bicycles don't argue with cars. It's not smart. They, they, they rode for... They rode for uh, a good ways, I don't know how long it was, but they rode, they knew I was behind them. And they rode right out in the middle of the road and they would not move over and they dared me to do anything about it. Now I didn't honk my horn, I just slowed down, I stayed behind them. I didn't give any kind of indication I was, uh, just, but you would think young people when they see a car coming, whenever they are out on their bicycle, you'd think they would get out. They, uh, they deliberately stayed in front of my car. I've had it to happen many times. Rebellion for, uh, against authority. Something's wrong in the homes of young people today. Young, something's wrong in America today. And that's what Paul was talking about to young Timothy here. You see, when things are not taught right in the home, it causes kids to turn bad. Yeah, and, and you know, we may laugh at a little child. This, is, this point's been made so many times, but it's so right. Uh, you know, little children need to be, they have, need to have order in their home. They need to be taught order. 
They need to have love. They need to, they need to have respect. They need to, 